Imperial Majesty, how does it seem to you the Apostle Paul meant the statement, faith works by love? What St. Paul said here is not a mistaken statement. You all know what St. Paul was and what kind of work he was engaged in before his conversion. Later on, after his conversion, he had faith and love, and if he had not had that, he would not have taught people this in his epistles. Neither love nor faith are separable from each other. An elaboration of this is Paul's exposition in one of his epistles, which speaks of love and faith. Without love, all of our human efforts in the sight of God can be useless. He loved us, and on our behalf, he was given as a ransom, and it was because of love and his love for us that he accomplished the act of love. Your Imperial Majesty, as a member of the body of Christ, what do you expect of the church? The church is not merely a building. The church is the faithful fulfillment of the Christian life and its requirements. Thus, as the name applies to the building, so is our heart, the church in which God dwells. After our blameless Creator was sent to this world by His Father, then the hearts of all believers became the temple of God. The love of Christ cannot be fathomed by a series of questions and answers, and man's soul cannot experience deeper enrichment as a result. We believe that man can at all times be bound by his love and grace. Your Imperial Majesty, as a member of the body of Christ, what do you feel you can contribute to the life of the church? All men are endowed with natural responsibility. This responsibility is in turn distributed and delegated to all according to his gift, and it is expected of each one to fulfill his responsibility. This responsibility in turn is to God, and thus, for example, one would start his working by asking God to bless the beginning and thank God for a good ending too. We believe that all people, in all of their responsibilities delegated to them, will begin and finish their work in God's name. I give you a brief answer. If we go on into details, we would have to spend a long time discussing. But it is a magnificent answer. and. Uh, I am deeply grateful for it. To turn to another subject, Your Imperial Majesty, are there any passages of the Bible that have become especially meaningful to you? I have the highest respect for the Bible as a whole. We also recognize the rightful name the Bible bears. We find that in all the periods of the Old Testament in the time of patriarchs, kings and prophets, great miracles were done. On the other hand, the New Testament in which our Lord himself gave the command to go to all the world and to preach is also of high value. Then Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, the four Gospels in which the sayings of our Lord are recorded, are pillars for all men on the earth. Therefore, the Bible should not be cut into portions. Your Imperial Majesty, as a mature Christian, have you a special word for young people of these days? <laughs> On this occasion, I address also all those within our empire. Our Christianity is not restricted to a given church, and I stress above all, that we do not wish to make distinctions. My advice to all is to fulfill the Ten Commandments. You are aware of the contents of the Ten Commandments and can elaborate on it. 
if the nation for which I am the emperor follows and accepts this, since it's also what I accept and follow. I would believe our country is not only historically Christian, but also actively Christian. Imperial Majesty, the birthday of our Lord is observed by people throughout the world in various ways, I know. And I should like to ask you how you observe the Feast of the Nativity of our Lord within your own family and household. The birth of our Lord is a joyous family event. However, I do not only rejoice with my immediate family, since the whole Ethiopian nation is my family. I say this in the context of Christmas being observed by all churches in Ethiopia. I rejoice on this occasion also because of Jesus Christ being given for us. For he was born in the lowly place and got warmth by animals. This fact encourages us to celebrate it with joy. When I have visited the five large continents, I have not been anywhere where there was not a church. All over the world, I have come to know that the birth of Jesus Christ is celebrated. As I said before, the birth of Christ is celebrated all over the world. When I say in the whole world, it does not mean that all people would observe it in the same manner. In all the places that I have visited, including the Muslim and the Buddhists, we have seen the observance. But for Christians, it is an act conducted with love. Your Imperial Majesty, you have done us great honor and also all the people who will listen to this broadcast by giving us the opportunity to speak with you this day. And all those who are listening should know that this conversation was held in the Imperial Palace at Addis Ababa, Ethiopia with His Imperial Majesty, the Emperor of Ethiopia, Haile Selassie I. And we thank you and wish you God's blessing in all the days to come. Thank you. Now, Shalom. Greetings to the Aydem. Welcome, Pasika. Greetings and Shalom. This is your Wendem Lidzwari Tafari. Welcome. Just by Tuesday's Discipleship Radio. And I give thanks and I greet the eye. Right hand to the forehead, I salute thee, I give thanks to our Father. Brothers and sisters, uh, oh, this is a special week. This is a uh, holy week, holy strong, as we say. And uh, there are many themes and many things that are going on. And tonight, my brothers and sisters, as we gather here, on our special podcast here at Testify Tuesdays, we should be able to utilize the time and come forth and have a few discussions and have a few reasonings. We actually have a few few questions that I and I have uh, been gathering, you know, keeping I and I ear on the streets and um, also receiving messages from ones and ones. And so hopefully we can get to some of these topical matters uh, tonight to make the announcement. We're going to go forth for... A full six hours tonight, y'all willing? We have uh, we're about halfway into 
this for a segment, which will run us to 12 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we should have another segment, part two, of Testify Tuesdays, coming up at one. I'm sorry, at 12 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, which we should run for another three hours, y'all willing? Again, I give thanks. I greet the item, and uh, just in a in a meditative mood, I, w- I would say, you know, um, there's much going on as one's well ones in the know, and I know uh, we have uh, many disciples who have other testimonies based on how their reflection of the times have been going. And um, again, to point to the special time and the special season, this is I and I Passover week. This is the, the period of time that we've been waiting on for um, for quite a while now. We've, we've been counting, not really counting down, but announcing, you know, the special time. And here we are. We're into this special season. We have, um, we have a few celestial signs, a few and ones and ones know, of course, of the the well, the partial, the partial uh, blood moon, as well as a few super moons, a few uh, a lot of things. Uh, you know, our father's showing us, you know, his signs. The activities are, you know, not only in the sky, not, not only in the skies as well, but on, also in I and I lives. I hope ones and ones. Um, have been, you know, been trans- transforming within this time. Again, uh, speaking about the resonance of this particular period, and as we know, we have we have special readings that we go through for the period of uh, for this particular strong. And uh, tonight, hopefully, we can get to uh, do some audio readings, uh, which is normally we, we don't normally do on on Testify Tuesdays. Uh, we kind of keep it more, you know, laid back in a sense and. Um, have one's one's reason, and we will get to that tonight again, as we always do. But uh, within the special time that we have, um, you know, we can hear. You know, it's not going to take as much time. We can play the uh, audio readings, and um, we can get a shema listening. You know, I know one's one's uh, perhaps not perhaps because I know we have disciples here that are gathered. I know one's ones are already up on their studies. So. Uh, this will just be an auxiliary, and hopefully, you know, perhaps ones have gone further in the studies, and perhaps want to bring a few things to light concerning the, the readings that we have uh, for this strong. Um, as I mentioned before, there's a, there's a few things, a few, uh, I guess, a few questions that we want to bring out, and I give thanks to ones who are gathered, and um, give thanks in advance to one for ones who will hear the the podcast and the forward. Again, this is Liz Zawadi Tafari, um, your uh, your humble host here. That's by Tuesdays, and um, we we do have the pleasure of having uh, some of my night disciples that are gathered here. So for ones the ones who are listening, and again who will hear this in the forward, uh, we do have a few disciples that are with us tonight. Quite a few, you know, a good amount of us, about uh, eleven or twelve of us uh, so far. And um, we seek to get to ones the ones that are gathered. And I give thanks in advance for ones again making the time um, each and every Tuesday coming forth and uh, you know gathering. Uh, as we always do, as we always do, there's always much food to sup, you know. And so, and I give thanks, and um, hopefully, again, as we as we seek to utilize the time to uh, bring forth some of our brothers and sisters, and um, a special mention, of course, we have we do have the honor pleasure of having I and I, um, I and I Ras Rebbe here as well. Um, Rasi Don Stefari is in in our presence, and I and I give thanks, and we'll bring forth. Uh, there will be in a few because, as I mentioned before, uh, we do have a few questions, and so hopefully we can perhaps uh, all we'll do is we'll announce probably perhaps some of the questions, uh, and you know we'll perhaps play the readings and then come forward and hear some of the uh, elaborations on what ones and ones uh, we're speaking about. So, in the interim here before we begin, um, again I want to you know give thanks and um, give thanks to our Father, and we, we gather here to bring to bring glory to His holy name. And I give thanks in advance uh, for this blessed gathering here tonight. And um, Yeshua, Yeshua Shalom to all the Aidem. I, and I, you know, this is, as we know, this is a special time, and it's all about Yeshua. This, you know, this, um, you know, as we embrace the New Covenant, the New Testament, and so. Um, but anyway, let me um, let me push forward. I know we have a few things, and hopefully we can get to ones and ones. I know we had a blessed uh, Passover. Give thanks for the gathering that that happened. Um, at our main show, uh, a partial over, over, overview show, at uh, after the Shabbat on the uh, actually on the first day, and I give thanks for 
I was able to get out listening to that, and uh, it was a, such a blessed and smooth uh, um, podcast, and uh, very informative. And give thanks to ones who were gathered and were able to share a word and or a psalm, and um, you know it was a blessing. And I give thanks for that. And so, you know, if we ones, you know, again, we can get to ones ones experiences in in this time. And I know, you know, maybe we have one or two that have, you know perhaps tried to make their own bread. You know, we could share that experience. <laughs> you know, and again, it's not it's not about the outer things, uh, as we all know. Uh, not to really, you know, you know, uh, you know, judge it in our minds, as it were, to go and do all these external things. But, you know, ones and ones might have had a curiosity. I know ones and ones were asking about it. And, you know, it's, um, and we have some sister wives, you know, perhaps might have tried a little something extra and you know, give us, you know, give us a recipe, you know, how fine I, how fine I out. But anyway, again, we, we gather here as a family and, you know, we're looking forward to get to all that are gathered, especially uh, once the ones who we haven't spoken to uh, in a little while, and hopefully again, um, and I see we have we have some blessed sisters here with us. I uh, give thanks for the sisters gathering and, and joining us. And um, anyway, let's let's push forward uh, again as we already uh, went. We're almost uh, into the last couple of hours here for this particular segment, and as I mentioned, we'll regroup again at 12 uh, a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So um, to get to the questions, I guess. Uh, well, I have, and again, this, these were gathered, and you know, good thanks to my sister wife and uh, for ones who were helping I and I, and because I know we, we have we have ones who are query, not you know, specifically not perhaps not ones who are within the community who probably have uh, their own basis of knowledge, you know, anyway, and uh, you know, gather it as they were. But um, some of the questions and queries were for, from people outside of the community who have heard or stumbled upon certain information and want to. You know, get an elaboration, and so hopefully we can get to some of those uh, tonight. Uh, so I see, uh, well, one of the first questions here I see is from, well, this is actually directed to the host, which is I&I, and uh, it's just, I guess it's concerning the uh, Rastafari Arts and Facts Project. Uh, ones and ones wanted to know, and I guess, well, I don't know if I should, because that's not really a personal question in that sense, but uh, I, I know... Um, um, maybe I'll just uh, maybe I'll answer that in the forward. Um, one of the second questions that we had, and hopefully uh, I know the Rebbe is uh, definitely with us uh, tonight, and also fellow disciples, uh, once could take down the uh, questions and you know we can seek to get some proper answers. Uh, the second question was uh, concerning the Good Friday deception. Uh, this this basically um, I, I have a short a short. Uh, uh, in a few sentences, not even a few, not it was just one sentence. Uh, basically, what's what's uh, they're asking about the, uh, the 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 Good Friday deception. Um, and I know we have, and I give thanks to Ina Wyndham. Um, of course, give thanks to to Rossi and Mr. Fadi, and also give thanks to Ina Wyndham, uh, Ross Mikael uh, Ra'a, and I saw quite a few things uh, on Facebook concerning this uh, same particular issue as well. And um, it's a uh, it's a good question. I know we have. Because, you know, the whole Good Friday thing and, uh, you know, the, the three days and three, you know, but I get to, you know, that, that question was asked. And so we will we'll get to that um, and get further elaboration, I guess, is what the question would really be, I guess, because now you can't really ask what. So I guess we'll have uh, further clarification or elaboration on a particular question. And um, on a side note, um, I also want to speak to, I know we have the Rebbe here as well, and, and some of the other might, disciples might be familiar. Um on a personal note, I know I, you know, again, and this is a stepping aside from uh, from what we have here, and you know, just you know, bear with I and I. Um, but uh, the, uh, the Rebbe Rossi is on the and I, and I bless the teacher, and give thanks for um, for the fellowship and for being, um, you know, for being available for I and I to even pose these questions and to have, you know, have these discussions. Um, but I, in uh, I think in a in a few prior uh, gatherings, it was mentioned. Uh, and not even well, in the gatherings. The gatherings were concerning the Torah portions, which were mentioned, the uh, the stones, the stones and crystals that were used, you know, in the ephod, and et cetera, et cetera. And so, um, you got it. Uh, so the question, another question, but um, getting into getting getting into it because you know. Uh, as we know, once we've had this conversion, this this metanoia, this change of mind, right, and we come into this Christ mind, you know, we start to vibrate. We start to physically, vi- you know, well, maybe not in the physical sense, if, if one could really 
and the ones who are gonna, you know, chase down I and I words. Not really most, but you know, we we vibrate differently. And so everywhere we go, once once can tell that we, you know, we have something different about us, and we don't, you know, they can't really put their finger on it, but we we have a different vibration. We also, we, you know, we walk around with our light, and that's you know distracting for <laughs> uh, for ones in the dark. And which is why we, you know, even though we we don't seek attention, sometimes we we get attention just because of who we are, and that's just how it is. And, and perhaps it's made to be that way. Um, but anyway, um, concerning vibrations and the, you know, I was getting into a specific a specific study. Even you know, let me link it forward to what I and I is really trying to say here, because um, I found out from well, frankincense and myrrh, the oil, the ones who are into. Essential oils. I know we have some sisters here. I know we have a few brothers who might be into it. Uh, the essential oils are actually very, very good for our, our, uh, our physical temple, our physical bodies. And uh, frankincense and myrrh has uh, actually the highest vibration. If you, uh, everything in life is, you know, everything has a vibration to it. And out of all the oils, frankincense and myrrh um, has the most vibration out of all. The other essential oils. You're talking about all, you know, lavender, rose oil. Actually, rose oil is actually um, actually up there as well. But uh, frankincense and myrrh being uh, high, has the highest frequency. Uh, let's let's use the technical term highest frequency because um, we're not just talking about. You know, we're actually talking about actually you can, you can measure it and you can ones ones can look this up and correct I and I if I'm incorrect. But just from what I I and I has gathered, uh, frankincense and myrrh being um, one of the highest frequency oils um, that exists. And we know frankincense and myrrh, you know, it's mentioned in, in the Holy Scriptures. And also, you know, as we know, you know, the, uh, the ones one should know, again. Um, but anyway, just just uh, bringing that forth, um, you know, because we, we're going to get into a whole thing with the uh, essential oils. And um, and then, it, it, you know, also the, the, the stones. And uh, Brother Yad and uh, Rossi, Don Stefani, had mentioned the, the lapis lazuli. Uh, from pre- from a few previous uh, strongs, and I and I, not not I, not that I've been holding on to this, but I and I had gotten into this from before. I actually have some stones, and uh, well, it's not really well, crystals, really. Um, and it, just because again, um, everything has frequency. Everything has it gives off frequency, and actually, some of these stones help to magnify our frequency in that sense. And again, ones ones don't you know don't. I know Rastafari, I know, but but you know, His Majesty, even His Majesty said to seek secular knowledge, and and hopefully, you know, I'm not going too far into it here to to push ones and ones off of it, but it's an interesting thing because um, um, the way I and I uh, gathered the stones was based on I and I uh, bird stones, uh, well, not really bird stones, really, um, but it, there's certain stones that go with everybody's. If you call yourself, you know, whatever sign, zodiac sign, what's out there, whatever. Uh, and, and again, forgive I and I. I know it sounds, you know, probably a little bit out there, but you know, bear with I and I. One of I and I stones is actually the lapis lazuli, um, as well as some other I have blue, blue lace of God, and, and these things just go together with I and I um, physical man- manifestation according to you know the frequencies, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Everybody, if you're a fire sign, water sign, all this stuff. And again, you know, forgive I and I if it sounds like a little bit, you know. But it's not really astrology. These are actually the stones. Actually, some of the stones are actually mentioned, as we know, in the scriptures, and that's to be a particular reason why. And of course, not only just the physical, and also just naming the numerically, you know, you know, separating the tribes, but um, also because these stones have particular, you know, I wouldn't say power in that sense, but they have, you know, there's a reason they were specifically chosen in that sense. You know, I mean, it wasn't just like random stones or, or crystals, I should say. So. Anyway, it was just interesting, and I know um, from just listening from what what you know what when the Miyadin was saying, I know he was touching on a few things and was trying to bring it out. He mentioned it a few times. I caught it caught it when he said it, but he, it, he wasn't. He didn't really get a chance to, I guess, get into it. And um, I'm just interested in, in that particular part as well because, again, um, <laughs> to say the least, that the stone. I, mean, I wouldn't say that the crystal. It's not, it's not really the crystals that you know. It's not really that they. Um, not that they help me so much, but I guess you know I've just been I have them just because again they, they if you, if ones and ones can really um, uh, I'm trying not to sound because I know this can already, you know ones listening to this will take it left field right away and think it's you know something totally different, but it's really not. This, these are just these are natural stones, natural crystals, and again from the earth, and um, yeah, they give out frequency. And if you have the frankincense and myrrh, these things help. So and again, it's not it's not really about the physical again, not the really 
you know, bring some kind of manifestation upon our physical bodies in that sense. But again, these things help us, you know, just as, well, not just as the Aishans, the Aishans is a whole separate thing altogether. Um, but there are things that are ha- that enhance us and, um, you know, that come from come from nature. In the same way as we switch from traditional foods to Aito foods, they, play, they play a part in our, in our physical manifestations. It's the same thing, uh, same kind of way. But anyway, uh, without getting too much, uh, I, I know I probably took one's, <laughs> And I probably took one's uh, left field with that, you know, with this particular. But anyway, we're, we're going to go forward with some with, the, uh, with some of the questions again. Um, the rest of our arts and facts projects, I never get to that, you know, in the forward. And uh, it's just, you know, and I'll give an explanation. I got uh, ones ones who asked that question, and um, we'll have the the Rebbe come forward and uh, answer the question concerning the the Good Friday and resurrection, et cetera, and so. Because uh, I know we have uh, also fellow disciples and ones ones who are listening, know probably uh, benefit and want to also. Because I know we've heard the uh, subcat from before, but you know, being that it's being directly asked, perhaps we can have some elaboration. And if ones ones can kind of, uh, well, we, I know we have the Rebbe here. I know we have a best of answer. So, um, anyway, without further ado, let's bring forth. Um, let's bring forth the Rebbe. Uh, when we speak of uh, I and I um, teacher, I and I fellow disciple, fellow. Um, co-laborer, I and I fellow uh, brother in Christ, I and I give thanks for the Rebbe, for the blessed teachings, and um, for the revelations um, of the I and um, all the I's work and uh, the work of the ministry. It's tr- helped uh, help I and I tremendously, and helped all of the brothers and sisters tremendously as well. And um, I and I give the I in love. I and I give thanks for the I for the I again and Melkam uh, Fasika Salantana. Thanks. Greetings. Oh, <clears throat> Isis, Isis, Salam, Yes, Salam, Yeshua, Shalom, brothers, Wendem Och, Yeshua, Shalom, Rastafari, Wendem Achu, the Aydem, brother, the Gormawi Netacho, Ibnet, in His Majesty's face, the Aydem No Kedemawi, you know, Haile Selassie, His name in the royal language, in the in the pure language, Gormawi Netacho. This is say His Majesty, Karmawi Net, Majestic. And if you speak to him, Karmawi Net, oh, Your Majesty, Karmawi Net, whoa. I've just gone over that from uh, this book, uh, Amharic uh, Crestal Mass. He was able to get another copy of it by Edward Uhlendorf. Um Very good book, Edward, Edward Uhlendorf, you know, um, in praise of that particular Gentile scholar who was very, very on point with a lot of things, I think, ahead of his time. You know, I'm just kind of mentioned because that's some of the meditation that I and I was um, touching on. No doubt that will connect with other pieces of the puzzle, bringing the full peace, the full shalom to I and I hearts and I and I homes. Yes, I um Something you said, my brother. First of all, I wanted to say the I is on the on the dashboard in the studio. I really loved how the I presented the opening and the the sequence of audios and the music. I was really, you know, that was like it really got I and I into meditation. So when the I said. I was like, you know, the mellow vibes. I, I really overstood that, and I give thanks that I took the moment to, you know, reason and touch on a, a few a few matters, but related. And and um, the first thing is something I was just reading the other day. Um, it's the Chronicles of, um, I think, uh, I know one of I and I, Wendemoj, his name is, is that name in the, in the Amharic, Yereh uh, Mi'el. Yerahimel or Yerahimel, right? Or the Chronicles of uh, Let's see, how did how? All right, I don't know, Rabbi, are you there? We having a little bit of a connection problem, scenes. Um. Oh, I'm not sure. Okay, right, so we, I, I'm not sure if we. Uh, Rebbe's here. I'm, I think we do have uh, some kind of connection issue, and uh, hopefully we can get some, uh, get a reconnect. And uh, we we're just about to begin. Uh, Rebbe, are you there? Shalom. 
Oh, all right. So he's uh, he's officially dropping. I know he's going to call back, uh, call for it uh, in a few minutes. But um, again, forgive me and I for uh, we, we we're not going to take a left uh, tonight. You know, we're going to get to ones and ones and get to some of the discussions. Um, again, this is uh, the gathering for uh, this holy strong that we have, this Fasica strong and uh, Passover strong. And uh, again, we have we do have some readings uh, to get to. And um, as we wait for the Rebbe to come forward. Um, I kind of go through with the readings, and um, we have special readings for uh, this particular time. Uh, for today, we have Exodus 22, 24, I'm sorry, Exodus 22, verse 24, to uh, Exodus 23, verse 19, as well as uh, Numbers, ch- chapter 28, verses 19 to 25. So I'm going to kind of go forth and uh, get some of the readings in as we wait uh, I'll wait the reconnection. Give thanks to ones and ones again who are gathered, and uh, all of our nine brothers and sisters. Give thanks for your patience. You know these things are not uh, perfect, but uh, make I kind of push forward with the reading of the word, uh, just so we can get it out, and then we can get to the discussions, perhaps a lot quicker, and bring one, bring on ones ones. Uh, brothers and sisters, if you're gathered tonight, we will get to the one to, to all all of our and I gathered, and again, um, I and I probably will put everybody on the spot if you're on the phone <laughs> with us tonight. Uh, we do seek to hear from I and I, and so hopefully, um, you know, even if it's just us, you know, if he's going to come up and say hi uh, or greet the family, I know we'll, we'll, we'll go go forth and bring forth all ones who are gathered. Uh, so anyway, uh, let's push forward with the uh, reading of the word. Uh, we're going to go with the Torah, uh, Exodus chapter 22. Shalom. Chapter 22. If a man shall steal an ox or a sheep, and kill it or sell it, he shall restore five oxen for an ox, and four sheep for a sheep. If a thief be found breaking up, and be smitten that he die, there shall no blood be shed for him. If the sun be risen upon him, there shall be blood shed for him, for he should make full restitution. If he have nothing, then he shall be sold for his theft. If the theft be certainly found in his hand alive, whether it be ox or ass or sheep, he shall restore double. If a man shall cause a field or vineyard to be eaten, and shall put in his beast, and shall feed in another man's field, of the best of his own field, and of the best of his own vineyard, shall he make restitution. If fire break out, and catch in thorns, so that the stacks of corn, or the standing corn, or the field be consumed therewith, he that kindled the fire shall surely make restitution. If a man shall deliver unto his neighbor money or stuff to keep, and it be stolen out of the man's house, if the thief be found, let him pay double. If the thief be not found, then the master of the house shall be brought unto the judges to see whether he have put his hand unto his neighbor's goods. For all manner of trespass, whether it be for ox, for ass, for sheep, for raiment, or for any manner of lost thing which another challengeth to be his, The cause of both parties shall come before the judges, and whom the judges shall condemn, he shall pay double unto his neighbor. If a man deliver unto his neighbor an ass, or an ox, or a sheep, or any beast to keep, and it die, or be hurt, or driven away, no man seeing it, then shall an oath of the Lord be between them both, that he hath not put his hand unto his neighbor's goods, and the owner of it shall accept thereof, and he shall not make it good. And if it be stolen from him, he shall make restitution unto the owner thereof. If it be torn in pieces, then let him bring it for witness, and he shall not make good that which was torn. And if a man borrow aught of his neighbor, and it be hurt or die, the owner thereof being not with it, he shall surely make it good. But if the owner thereof be with it, he shall not make it good. If it be an hired thing, it came for his hire. And if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed, and lie with her, he shall surely endow her to be his wife. If her father utterly refuse to give her unto him, he shall pay money according to the dowry of virgins. Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Whosoever lieth with a beast shall surely be put to death. He that sacrificeth unto any god, save unto the Lord only, he shall be utterly destroyed. 
Thou shalt neither vex a stranger nor oppress him. For ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. Ye shall not afflict any widow or fatherless child. If thou afflict them in any wise, and they cry at all unto me, I will surely hear their cry. And my wrath shall wax hot, and I will kill you with the sword. And your wives shall be widows, and your children fatherless. If thou lend money to any of my people that is poor by thee, thou shalt not be to him as an usurer, neither shalt thou lay upon him usury. If thou at all take thy neighbor's raiment to pledge, thou shalt deliver it unto him by that the sun goeth down, for that is his covering only. It is his raiment for his skin, wherein shall he sleep. And it shall come to pass, when he crieth unto me, that I will hear, for I am gracious. Thou shalt not revile the gods, nor curse the ruler of thy people. Thou shalt not delay to offer the first of thy ripe fruits and of thy liquors, the firstborn of thy sons shalt thou give unto me. Likewise shalt thou do with thine oxen and with thy sheep. Seven days it shall be with his dam, on the eighth day thou shalt give it me. And ye shall be holy men unto me. Neither shall ye eat any flesh that is torn of beasts in the field. Ye shall cast it to the dogs. Chapter 28 And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel, and say unto them, My offering and my bread for my sacrifices made by fire for a sweet savour unto me, shall ye observe to offer unto me in their due season. And thou shalt say unto them, This is the offering made by fire which ye shall offer unto the Lord, two lambs of the first year without spot, day by day, for a continual burnt offering. The one lamb shalt thou offer in the morning, and the other lamb shalt thou offer at even and a tenth part of an ephah of flour for a meat offering, mingled with the fourth part of an hin of beaten oil. It is a continual burnt offering, which was ordained in Mount Sinai, for a sweet savour, a sacrifice made by fire unto the Lord. And the drink offering thereof shall be the fourth part of an hin for the one lamb. In the holy place shalt thou cause the strong wine to be poured unto the Lord for a drink offering. And the other lamb shalt thou offer at even, as the meat offering of the morning, and as the drink offering thereof thou shalt offer it a sacrifice made by fire of a sweet savour unto the Lord. And on the Sabbath day, two lambs of the first year without spot, and two tenth deals of flour for a meat offering mingled with oil, and a drink offering thereof. This is the burnt offering of every Sabbath, beside the continual burnt offering and his drink offering. And in the beginnings of your months ye shall offer a burnt offering unto the Lord, two young bullocks and one ram, seven lambs of the first year without spot, and three-tenth deals of flour for a meat offering mingled with oil for one bullock, and two-tenth deals of flour for a meat offering mingled with oil for one ram, and a several-tenth deal of flour mingled with oil for a meat offering unto one lamb, for a burnt offering of a sweet savour, a sacrifice made by fire unto the Lord. And their drink offerings shall be half an hin of wine unto a bullock, and the third part of an hin unto a ram, and a fourth part of an hin unto a lamb. This is the burnt offering of every month throughout the months of the year. And one kid of the goats for a sin offering unto the Lord shall be offered, beside the continual burnt offering and his drink offering. And in the fourteenth day of the first month is the Passover of the Lord. And in the fifteenth day of this month is the feast. Seven days shall unleavened bread be eaten. In the first day shall be an holy convocation. Ye shall do no manner of servile work therein. But ye shall offer a sacrifice made by fire for a burnt offering unto the Lord. Two young bullocks and one ram and seven lambs of the first year. They shall be unto you without blemish. And their meat offering shall be of flour mingled with oil. Three-tenth deals shall ye offer for a bullock, and two-tenth deals for a ram. A several-tenth deal shalt thou offer for every lamb throughout the seven lambs. And one goat for a sin offering to make an atonement for you. Ye shall offer these beside the burnt offering in the morning, which is for a continual burnt offering. After this manner ye shall offer daily throughout the seven days the meat of the sacrifice made by fire of a sweet savour unto the Lord. It shall be offered beside the continual burnt offering and his drink offering. And on the seventh day ye shall have an holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work. Also in the day of the first fruits, when ye bring a new meat offering unto the Lord, after your weeks be out, ye shall have an holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work. But ye shall offer the burnt offering for a sweet savour unto the Lord, two young bullocks, one ram, seven lambs of the first year, and their meat offering of flour mingled with oil, three-tenths deals unto one bullock, two-tenths deals unto one ram, a several-tenth deal unto one lamb throughout the seven lambs, and one kid of the goats to make an atonement for you. Ye shall offer them beside the continual burnt offering and his meat offering. 
They shall be unto you without blemish, and their drink offerings. Shalom again to the eye. This is Yawandam, Lezawari Tufari. And uh, we're still waiting for the Rebbe to come forward. I, I believe we had a little bit of an issue there, and we, I actually, I'm, I'm, I'm having some issues on my end as well. Hopefully, we can push forward and uh, continue. Um, but as we wait for the Rebbe to uh, make that connection, and, uh, and I also uh, perhaps need to, do, need to do a few things behind the scenes, let's go forward and bring forward. Uh, some of my fellow co-laborers and fellow disciples. Uh, I want to bring forward um, from RastafariRenaissance.com. Aina Wendem is here. Johannes Wilde Emanuel. Brother Yifti is here. Greetings, Brother Shalom. Malcolm Fasika. Greetings, Shalom. Good, good thanks. Yes, I greetings. Greetings, my brother. Greetings to the family. Pesach to Malcolm Fasika. I'm uh, just uh, really going over the studies uh, once again as we continue uh, in the Holy Week, uh, brothers and sisters. You know, um, like the brother said uh, earlier, we we really shouldn't focus so much on, you know, the physical um, initiations or the, uh, the, you know, the practical things that uh, most of the the the, the Euro Jews, uh, our other brothers of the the Hasidim and and on many of the, the things that they normally keep in practice to keep their uh, mindset on uh, Torah and uh, the times of the seasons. And uh, those things are always good, but uh, we're still learning and we're still growing and, and we're still uh, are really all in uh, the babe sense. So that's really a shout-out to most of the newcomers who feel like they might not know so much about the, the Moedim or the holy times and the, the, the holy feasts. You know, this is still a growing period for us, so I, I'm really more humbled by the fact that everyone is here and they're still learning these things. So I really give thanks for that, you know, as your brother, because these things have really, you know, set um, myself personally on a journey. Uh, I actually tried myself, you know, to go through the ritualistic type of um, practices, and uh, after reading through most of what the Rebbe presented in our own Haggadah for the Rastafari uh, Ethiopian Hebrews. I mean, it was a really eye-opening experience for me, especially um, last year when I actually read through the Haggadah. So, I mean, just setting that um, that order in the perspective of the Seder and learning those things, uh, you know, step by step, you know, just making that one move closer to Jah, it's really a spiritual thing. And I was actually listening to uh, our brother, Wilder Mikael. I had to give him a shout-out because he made a, a couple of videos on the, the Passover season, and he was reading from, uh, I'm not sure if that was the, the uh, one of the New Testament Bibles. They have the uh, the interpretations, uh, not from the school field, but I think it's uh, one of the, I can't I remember the that, name. Uh, it might be the Recovery Bible, I believe. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, my brother, the, the Recovery, recovery Bible. Bible. Give thanks. Yes, sir. the brother was touching on a, a lot of good points uh, in the Recovery Bible, especially going over the Passover season, because it really kind of helped I and I myself. <clears throat> it really helped I and myself to really put more things into perspective that I was studying and kind of bring into the forefront. And I, I was reasoning with uh, another brother. He, he's a Rastafari, you know, still more so in the, the Rasta kind of uh, interpretations of it still coming from the, the Bushman, um, you know, way of thinking. So a lot of uh, the things in the New Testament or, or the Brita Dasha, he, he really doesn't comprehend in a way that ones here might understand it. So I, I really went into it with the brother and kind of reasoned from his point of view and kind of helped him to see those things from the other perspective of why the New Testament was still just as important as the Old Testament because uh, the point that he was really bringing out was the fact that Yeshua, he couldn't see Yeshua in the Old Testament. And that's when I really just kind of had to, you know, show him some things that he might not be privy to coming from the early Rasta or the, the, the more like the branch off 
of the original conception of what the original roster forward were bringing out, especially uh, Bob Marley, Peter Thompson, of course, uh, a living testament brother, and the great elder, Buddy Whaler. But uh, I mean, just seeing, it, not knowing that <clears throat> the Passover lamb is Yeshua was the point that he was actually missing. I mean, once I actually gave him a few scriptures that we you would, would usually study, especially going through the readings that we just had and the things that we continue to study going throughout the Holy Week. I mean, hopefully that brother will come back and we can really reason more on those things because he was a really intelligent brother, but it was just certain things that I know he just hadn't been shown. And I, I'm not saying that he wasn't, you know, intelligent enough to see it, but I know that he hadn't seen it from that perspective. So uh, just encouraging the brothers and sisters to keep your mind focused on Torah and know that the scriptures have to be accepted in totality for everything that they're worth. And his majesty makes a, a quote, and I, I have to quote him on this as a uh, Abba Father and a Abba Tadus, a Rastafari, a great, great and, and wonderful counselor. He mentions uh, one's the one should study all but only follow the good. So I, I really uh, want to keep the brothers and sisters' minds and hearts focused on those matters because it, it's really more of a spiritual fight than we're going to. It, it may have to come to a true and indeed physical fight, but we know that the, the battle is won by Jah. The battle is, is, is Jah's and his alone. We are just uh, parts of the body. So I, I greet the eye, Melkam Fasika, uh, Pesach to, and I, I pray that the, the eye's hearts and minds stay focused on Jah. And of course, we have to meet him at the door, which is Yeshua HaMoshiach. Amen. Shalom. Amen, amen. Give thanks, Aina Wyndham. Johannes Wolde Emanuel. Give thanks, Brother Yuti, for that uh, dissertation there. And uh, the, I mentioned a few things, and this is this is what I want to say. I know, I, and again, we're still, we're still uh, at the Rebbe God Kwan's ones. We, we do have a few people who joined us. Give thanks again for for Aina, uh, brothers and sisters who are gathered again. Uh, Rebbe just got disconnected, and hopefully we'll get to uh, touch forward in a few minutes um, and make another reconnection and have, uh, have uh, Rashid on us back on. Um, but again, uh, the I touched on a, f- a few things there, and um, I, I want to say this as well. You know, in, in this time, especially now, as Rastafari, you know, I, kn- I know we here are particularly different, you know, because we have uh, we've come within a particular school of knowledge, I guess, well, along a, a particular vein of knowledge, I would say. And I know we have different ones and ones, uh, you know, who call themselves Rastafari with, out there. And, and this is the thing, because again. I'm pointing this out specifically for this particular time. These, these times and seasons that we're in, as a soldier, we should be more, you know, more equipped. We should have this knowledge from before. And if you think about it from 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 a different aspect, let's think about it from a different perspective, right? The Torah Jews, you know, the mess, the non-Messianic Jews of this time, you know, the Hasidics, you know, you know, the, and I say the non-Messianic ones, the ones who, you know, because let's break down how you know, because we have, you know, we have. Judaism, and then we have Christianity, and then we have Judeo-Christian, which is what you know, I and I, what we follow, a mixture of both. But basically, to hold to that particular faith, that particular bracket of knowledge, I would say, is that, um, you know, the the non-Messianic Jews only hold to the Torah. They stick to Old Testament. They don't you know, follow anything in the New Testament, really. And most Christians, conventional Christians, follow everything in the New Testament, and they don't follow anything in the Old Testament. So it's like, one or the other, one of the ones that just, you know, you know, just disregarding, you know, it's like they split it to the book, the books in two. And in a sense, the, the early Rastafari, you know, especially, you know, keeping to, as we, as we like to say, groundation, um, a lot of us, especially within the, the teachings and the different mansions uh, and, and, and sects that we have uh, within the community of Rastafari, um, we're also of that same mind, as I was mentioning, uh, a lot of them don't. Uh, they're 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 probably what you would call non messianic Rastafari. They don't they don't uh, you know because they've been taught and you know it hasn't been revealed or taught in a, in a certain particular way. And um, being the, the, the you know the spiritual priests that we were you know in this in this in this fleshy world that we are, we should be a little bit more sharper than that. And I, and I know again these these things are all due to the different mansions and different uh, kind of doctrines et cetera, and perhaps not proper teaching. But we should be a little bit sharper. I mean you know we have. Uh, you know, uh, 
there is a plethora, a plethora of videos out there that have ones ones who are not prepared when faced with certain questions, and and and, and not saying ones one should memorize scripture by heart, but ones one should know. I mean, this is your faith. So ones you know, and if, if this is what we do, is you know, if we show up in eye nice spiritual swords as it were all the time, within we as we dip in the word, we should be a lot better in, in terms of you know, not only not just to refute for an answer for uh, argument's sake, but have the proper knowledge to. Um, not really for the person that you are uh, trying to you know speak to, but more for yourself to gain uh, y- your proper footing and grounding in what you believe. And, and that's a very important point that the I brought out because many Rastafari claim that they know, but they don't really have the full. They still don't have the full story. And this is why you know with the, with the times that we're in, it's too you know there's no more time for folly. You know, I and I have to we have to make some moves and we have to get a lot better. And I, I know again it's not directed to ones ones within here because I know as disciples. We're at a certain level, and but again, if you for ones ones who are not, you know, and again, it's not so, you know, there's no pride involved here. Ones the ones, you know, and, oh, I've been trotting for. Doesn't matter how you trot them for, because you can still be a babe in knowledge, you know, depending on how, you know, ripe your mind is, you know. And so I know we have different disciples on various different levels. We have ones who speak Amharic. We have ones who are, are prolific in Hebrew. We have ones the ones who are are great in, in the history, and we seek to get. You know, and this this is the this is the blessing of of these gatherings. The ones that wants to come together and share these knowledges, and again, we, we utilize uh, the panel members that we have, the ones that were gathered here, the ones who have studied these things, who have had um, different insights and different knowledge in certain you know particular aspects of Rastafari or with the Nainai faith, and and of course uh, utilize uh, the Rebbe. It's a blessed resource to have the ability to ask a question. And once ones, you know, I don't know, once ones might feel. You know, but on the air here especially is when one's one should bring forth. If, even if it's a small query, your small query might be something that one on one might have been thinking about and hadn't been able to bring it out. And, you know, you're stuck with that point because, you, didn't, you know, and so even if it's a small thing, one should bring it out. And, you know, we don't seek to, you know, denigrate anybody or talk down or, you know, there's no levels here. We just want to share information. And we have brothers and sisters who are willing and able. And, of course, we have uh, a blessed teacher and uh, many resources. And so, again, uh, for ones, ones who are within, who, who are part of I and I family, and for ones, ones who will listen to this podcast or, and coming into I and I, and I family, um, you know, well, first of all, it's Ugidi, you know, and I give thanks. Um, but we, that's what we look forward to do here. And, again, I'm, I'm saying this to say, as a brother mentioned, um, maybe not them, maybe not, you know, maybe not them, but us, I and I, I and I and I and I, should be a lot better in terms of knowing I and I, you know, divine heritage. And so, anyway, um, I just wanted to say that because, yeah, you know, you, may, you mentioned, you know, because we come across these brothers and they don't really know certain things and, you know, they've been holding fast to certain traditional teachings. And information is, you know, we're able to just pull out a phone, pull out a tablet and pull something out and be like, listen, look, this is what it is. And show ones and ones. And ones and ones should actually, be, you know, should have actually been doing these. But I know it's, it's, it's difficult to step out, out of the realm of what you've been taught. And so I know, you know, some, you know, ones are loyal to, almost like it's almost like ones are loyal to their, um, their school of thought rather than the actual, you know, what the actual, you know, the substance of the of faith is, you know, and as we know, and as we heard in the clip, uh, from His Imperial Majesty, which is love. Um, anyway, um, but give thanks again, I and I Wyndham, uh, brother. Give the I, we haven't had a chance to link my Wyndham. How's how's the I been doing on 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 a normal note? Did you, did you bake any? Uh, in Jira this week, you know, what's, what's happening with the eye? Oh, my brother, uh, I was actually uh, trying to get in touch with a, a friend of mine. Uh, I, I didn't actually uh, personally make any injury that myself. So, <laughs> but, I mean, it's just funny that, that I should mention that because uh, I was really more so, you know, putting that, that note out on Rastafari Renaissance as well, just kind of connecting the dots with the brothers and sisters on the unleavened bread. Oh, uh, yeah. So I, I, I yeah. came across that. I give thanks for that again oh. for my Wyndham. So also bring in, uh, you know, uh, resonance to the time and give thanks. The guy has some blessed photos and illustrations as well as some, uh, uh, you know, uh, extrapolation as it were. So give thanks again. Uh, didn't mean to cut the eye. Much. Give thanks. Oh, oh, give thanks, my brother. Give thanks. Uh, I just uh, getting in touch with a, a friend of mine from uh, the Atlanta area. You know, I didn't get the chance to touch base, base with um, Wyndham with, with Mandela. Uh, usually uh, when I go to the Atlanta area, me and the brother normally get together, and we, we actually went to an Ethiopian restaurant the last time I was there. 
and uh, I, I was seeking to really get in touch with him, but I, I, not not for this uh, this actual um, year. I didn't uh, prepare any you know special spiritual food for uh, this matter, but I just wanted to keep that on the, the brothers and sisters' mind, you know, about uh, you know those ritualistic things, and uh, it's it's not. Uh, mandatory so much that we do those things, but, you know, if you can do those things, then you can go forward and, you know, just have the experience. You know, just most of it is always a, a good thing to do. And uh, Of course, I'm seeking to get in touch with my brother and uh, maybe we could, uh, you know, probably share a meal or something like that and, you know, in the grace of Yeshua HaMashiach, you know, just for the Passover season. But give thanks for that, my brother. No, show him again to the eye and, um, uh, quick shout sign I went to him, as your brother mentioned, Brother brother Mandela, uh, Haile Jesus. Uh, I know the brother uh, was recently baptized, and I give thanks. Uh, one's the ones that the disciples should know the brother, uh, Wendell Mandela, on the YouTube, also RastafariGoundation.com, as well as on the Facebook. Um, I want to shout the eye, as well as uh, Twist Alef, Twist One, Emerald Music. Give thanks again, brother, and uh, for all the, all the items in the camp. Uh, brother Ross Mikhail Ra'as Selassie, and I give thanks for all the, all the co laborers, all the videos, all the information that's been going out. Rasu Dada, uh, Black Sabbath Sounds, and I give thanks. There's so many, so many Vainai brothers and sisters, but you know, just oh, just quickly off the top of the head, and I, Army uh, Army Gideon, you know, Rastafari Network, all Vainai brothers and sisters again, you know, again, I don't want to miss anybody out there, and we'll be here for a long time, picking up ones and ones, but give thanks again. And that was I and I went them, uh, went them, Yifti was just there, and now we're going to go forth and uh, touch on I and I went them, my fellow co labor as well. From Rastafari Midrashim works, Rastafari Talmud works on the WordPress. And I give thanks for my fellow brother, fellow co laborer, Brother Ayaso. And give thanks, Brother Shalom, Malcolm Fasika. Greetings. Ah, uh, whoa, Shalom, and then Shalom, Malcolm Fasika, to the I and to all the family. And um, yeah, that's a good point that the I mentioned um, regarding the brethren uh, and the Yifti that the I was reasoning on. And, just to share a few points from uh, I and I humble studies um, regarding Torah, um, the spiritual aspects of Torah, and actually, um, Israel received Torah when Moses received it from Yahweh, who he would be, he would be, his imperial majesty, Kenamari Haile Selassie, up on Sinai. But uh, Israel, all because studying these. Um, the, these portions right here, from what I'm able to gather during Fasika, during Pesach, uh, Passover, you please, um, you know, the order of things are set um, because, you know, as human beings, there has to be an order, and the Hebrew order is set right there. That's a testimony of the Bible that, um, you know, we're supposed to actually be in that law um, or at least functioning according to that law to bring us to the spiritual aspects of Torah because um, all the principles that were laid out in the previous reading um, basically is because Israel was not, after the sin of the golden cap, Israel was not, you know, ready to keep uh, spiritual Torah because when you contrast this um, with, uh, and this was something I was actually going through and, and sister pointing me to it, and I give thanks for that. But, uh you know, those rules and everything, it's like, uh, this is the church at Jerusalem when we really get the spirit of it because Torah was given on Shavuot and um, as well as, uh, I think it's called Pentecost, Pentecost, um, the Holy Spirit was given, but this is a little bit afterwards. And, oh, I think uh, the Zawadi's called job. We'll move forward uh, and I will he'll be back. But, uh, We'll be back in the forward. But uh, the spirit of it is like right now among us, among I and I, because, you know, the earth is Yahweh's and the fullness thereof. And we have so much just on this earth. If we use it lawfully according to the spiritual aspect of Torah. And um, there's actually regarding the stones, we could even look at that um, in a moment. I don't mean to be too long-winded, but uh, just to give a spirit of the way that, you know, I and I see, I and I lost the fire moving. And it's the, this is the church, the Nazarene church at Jerusalem. And um, it reads uh, chapter, this is chapter four, 
verses 32 through 37, and they read, uh, in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one source. And the multitude of them that are main were of one heart and one soul. Neither said any of them that aught of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things in common. And with great power and great hile did the apostles witness of the resurrection of Yeshua, Adoni Yeshua, the Master Yeshua, and great grace was upon them all. Neither was there any among them that lacked, for as many as were possessors of land or houses sold them and brought the prices of the things that were sold and laid them down at the apostles' feet, and distribution was made to every man according as he needed, as he needed. So according to as he needed. And Jose, who was Josie's, or um, who was by the apostle, was surnamed Barnabas, which being interpreted the son of consolation, a Levite, and of the country of Cyprus, having land sold it and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. So, I mean, there's really an abundance of you just uh, when you look at it. Just to go real quickly into um, this 12 tribes uh, chart, and this is regarding stones. Do anyone um, have any input? You know, this is just some initial information to put out there um, because if we look at, I, I noticed some of the Behit Tawi, they'd be wearing the, the stones, using stones. And, you know, this is all for our use. We don't worship the creation, but we worship the creator. So, um, just to give, you know, this is on MessianicTorahTruthSeeker.org, and it says, uh, the emblems of the 12 tribes and gates arrangement ordered based on Revelation, and it says, uh, Rubain, and that would correspond with Odin, a ruby, and it says, it is good for pregnant women, strengthens the heart, and calms the mood, and um, there's also some other reading, um, Ones and ones might have to be a little bit more familiar with the Hebrew to understand that aspect of it. Um, because all this, like, this time also in and through Yeshua is a revival, a renewal, a resurrection of life. Um, it corresponds, as we study a little more, we'll see the correspondence with the calendar, the, the, the time of the seasons, um, this really being called Abib, not Nisan. Nisan is a uh, later Babylonian. Uh, name for that time for the for that moon that cycle of the moon, but uh, but it would be a bead as an ababa again Adi Sababa the new flower, and then uh, and then we have uh, we have here uh, it says uh, Simeon Shimeon uh, it would be Ketede or Topaz it cleanses the blood and teaches the benefit of of the doubt. Uh, Levi, uh, Bereket Beryl, increases wisdom and age in learning. Uh, Yehuda, uh, Nefech, it, it would be t- uh, turquoise, calms the mood and removes worry. Um, there's a little bit more of the Hebrew study uh, beneath it, um, the Matri and such. But uh, I mean, everything, the, the Creator's pattern, High Elohim's pattern, our Father's pattern is, is very evident. And Yeshua is that gateway. So um, I mean, Saf- Saphir Sapphire. That might be the. I'm not sure because when I looked these up, there were different uh, color tones of each stone. So I think a lot more research. But this is all for us to you know utilize even in our uh, management, our household, our economy, even our commerce. Sapphire strengthens the eyes and brings peace. Uh, Zebulun, uh, Yohalam, the diamond brings longevity and helps in earning a livelihood. Uh, Don, uh, Yaquin strengthens a weak heart, brings joy and success to the wearer. Uh, Naftali, uh, Shabot, Agate, Agate brings peace and happiness and repels the Buddha only the evil eye. Um, Gad is Jasper, gives strength and removes worry and fear. Uh, Tarsus Emerald increases wisdom, gives courage, and the wearer finds favor in the eyes of fellow men, and it brings success in commerce or business. Uh, Yosef Ephraim Manasseh uh, Shoham Onyx is a remedy for restoring memory and improving sight, enables the wearer to speak wisely. Uh, Yashe Jade prevents hemorrhaging, improves sight, and aids in childbirth. So those are just some things to look at, you know, because as one saying goes, 
to the pure, everything is pure. To the cocaine, everything is cocaine. So it's something to meditate on. But uh, shalom and love to the whole family. Yeshua shalom. Amen. And while we wait for the Zawadi to come in the forward, uh, just play a quick uh, track thing. Oh, shalom again. Give thanks to the item. Uh, um, shalom to the I. Uh, give thanks for for the I's patience. We had a few technical difficulties, and give thanks for um, for the brothers uh, going forth. Uh, there was brother Ayason, uh, Master Fry Midrashi, Master Fry Tzah Mood on the WordPress, uh, and give thanks, my brother. If you, uh, are you still there, my brother? Uh, brother, brother Ayason, greetings. Oh, hello, greetings, greetings, shalom. <laughs> hello, yeah, <laughs> not quite sure. I was waiting for the I to come forward, and uh, you know, just, uh, uh, so you were, you, were, you were still going. But once once who don't know, I know I was uh, uh, disconnected. And I know we had a few. Uh, I know the Rebbe was disconnected. Give thanks, Rebbe's also here as well, and we'll push forward and, and uh, bring, bring him forward in, in, a, in a, as soon as we finish. Um, but brother, yes, when I, you said you uh, you weren't cut off. You said you were still going. So uh, I don't know if you had anything else to add to uh, what the I was saying, or if you were finished altogether. Oh no, I was. Uh, I, I, yeah, I was finished. I just uh, wanted oh. to share a few words with the family, and I'm grateful for that. To Abba and Yeshua, I mean. Oh yes, I and give thanks to the I. You know, ones the ones uh, again. This is I and I Wyndham, uh, brother I Stone. As ones the ones know, uh, fellow co labor as well as with uh, brother Yivdi, and uh, and as we greet the I again, you know, formally and, and informally, you know, um, how has the I been taking? Uh, you know, how's the how has been the last couple of days, the last few days been going for the I? You made have you also made any injera? Have you been making you know mixing up with the flour there in the kitchen or no? Not really. <laughs> No, I haven't had the opportunity to, but I definitely look forward to doing so. <laughs> All right, shalom. All right, All right. so, um, yes, I uh, give thanks. It's Ayana Windham, my brother Ayasun. And, of course, check out the brother's works on uh, Rasparai Mid Rashim, Rasparai Talmud. And, um, yes, I give thanks uh, for the ice patience. We have about an hour and 15 minutes left. And, as we said, without further ado, uh, I know we had a little bit of a disconnection problem. I and I uh, was disconnected as well as. Uh, Rashi Donis Tefari. So, without further ado, I know brother, I know uh, brother Yifti and brother Yason uh, just came through. Uh, we're gonna come forward with the Rebbe now, and um, I know we were, we were cut. We were, you know we got disconnected there. By, um, Rashi Donis Tefari. I'm not sure how much you caught uh, in the interim, but I know greet the eye. Rasfari, Rasfari Foundation dot com. Rasfari is about to go on the YouTube. Line of Judah Society of His Imperial Majesty. I greet the eye. Hey there, Rebbe. Shalom. Uh-huh. Greeting. Oh, oh, yeah, man. I, I I just kept going forward, and then, you know, I had the vibe. I said, let me just finish up what I'm saying. And then when I looked at the phone, it was like, boom. You know, I, I was just like speaking. I was just ethering. You know what I mean? So uh, I didn't even know at what point, what particular point it went off. I didn't even know that the I had also got you know the call drop, whatever. Technological demons, you know, you know, playing oh, so, games. So you, so, so you, you were still going then. I, I think we we cut out yeah, actually man. right at the right at the beginning. Actually, was when when you when the ad cut out, and as soon as you started, uh-huh. actually, so we didn't we didn't uh-huh. catch anything. So we missed the whole. <laughs> I was. I mean, I mean, to I, I, did I say this? Did I say that the first thing we need to really understand is that new day begins. Uh, I think it's, I think it's happening again. Uh, Rabbi um I don't know if there's something, or some other connection. Rabbi Shalom, are you there? All right, it appears, it appears it's happening again, my brothers and sisters. Uh, let's give this one one more try. Um, all right, so it, it appears the uh, his lot is dropped again. So we'll try to reconnect forward, and I know, uh, you know, with, within the technical, you know, we have a lot of technical difficulties that happen behind the scenes, my brothers and sisters. One's the ones who call in, you know, it might seem smooth, but there's a lot <laughs> going on uh, behind the scenes, and we seek to push through again, as we mentioned, uh, about an hour, an hour and 15 minutes left in this particular segment, and we're gonna go forth, and uh, you know, we're gonna refresh at the top of the hour, not the top of this hour, but at 12 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we're gonna run through, run through for another. Uh, three hours or so, uh, yeah, willing. So again, um, you know, this is uh, this is Fasika. This is uh, Ain't I Holy, 
Holy Week, and again, I know uh, we had we had some readings that that went forth, and um, um, you know, I, actually, one second, my brothers and sisters, uh, again, things are happening behind the scenes, and all right, so let's go forth. Uh, I, I see the Rebbe is uh, connected with us again. Uh, let's try this. Uh, take number three. Shalom, Rebbe. Greetings. Yeah, man, the, the, the craziest thing. I have like the phone like hooked up like to the charger because it was getting a little low. And the, the call went off again. I try, I was like, whoa. I, I went to call, and the call would, you know, like when the call would end, you know what I mean? Like would end suddenly, would even dial. It would just, I don't know. So I pulled out the charger, and I was able to call. I was able to call forward in. Um, but yeah, yeah. It's, I don't know. It's, some forces don't want because this is kind of root of it. So that they shall change laws and times. You know, the scripture says in Daniel which was a sealed book, unsealed now. They shall seek to change laws and times. Now let's look at time for a moment. When does a new day begin? I was seeking to address the Good Friday, the whole so-called Good Friday thing. If you look up in the scripture, Good Friday, you will not find it in any way used in the way that there's no scripture to back it up. Basically, there's no scripture. It's a tradition, but it's a tradition that is so-called extra-biblical, but it's outside of the Hebrew or outside of John's way, truth, and life. It's not part of Yahweh's word or anything like that. It's not there. It's like the Easter egg, the bunny rabbit, so forth and so on. Am I and I still, are we still on, just to make sure, because... Oh uh, yes, I and and just a preface uh, for ones I know we had ones who would who would uh, join us in the uh, you know in the forward as we had started. Just to preface the eyes, uh, you know, as we're going to go into it now. For ones who ones who who had not heard uh, the previous as we started, uh, the question was brought about concerning the uh, the well, what was phrased as the Good Friday deception or this you know the whole Good Friday thing and then the resurrection time and how that plays out. And the Rebbe is about to give the expansion that. But but yes, yes, I Rebbe, we can hear you loud and clear. And uh, we uh, welcome the eyes uh, dissertation. So shalom. Well, I did I did give a an exposition, but it was almost like I don't know. I guess I was I was ethering, I was ethering myself on the exposition, but um, it was good to kind of go through it. So now I could probably maybe simplify. The first thing, I, the first point is the new day begins at sunset. I think that's a very very important. Um, that's where it went off before. I don't know if it went off when I tried to bring that that point across before. But the new day begins at sunset, not at so-called uh, sunrise. The proof of it, Genesis. Proof of it, the scriptures. The proof of it, the holy season. The proof of it, the Sabbath. The, the Shabbat, the holy strong, doesn't begin um, Saturday morning. You know, when the sun rises, it begins Friday evening. If you even look at it in some of the Ethiopian the church and the Orthodox tradition, even based on the ancient Jewish and Judaic line of the tribe of Judah tradition that was there before Ethiopia continued to walk in the way of Christ, that even the, the like if, 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 if January 7th is, is the day that's observed for Christ's birth, then you know this ones will go to church when? They'll go to church the sixth, the eve. So you see that the evening, right, the evening and morning is one day. Now, Yeshua says, Yesu says, Isaac says that there are 12 hours. Know ye not that there are 12 hours in a day, right? And it's important to recognize some of these basic facts about time. I was I think one of the points I had made when I was off the air thinking I was on the air was that um for example when they say um three o'clock, the three o'clock hour, when do you think that is? Three in the afternoon, like we say today, no, the three o'clock hour is what we call nine o'clock. It's almost similar in the in the Ethiopian um um uh time keeping. You know, like in Ethiopia the way they keep time you know, would throw some, you know, people off. Like 1 o'clock is like actually 7, 7 a.m. is 1 o'clock. But see, when you approach the scripture now, having the correct um, jaw-given time, 
You know what I mean? That is important to be able to even calculate some of these basic things concerning the Good Friday. Like I said, Good Friday, it has no scriptural authority. You don't find it anywhere in the scripture. It's like Santa Claus. It's like the Easter egg and bunny rabbit and other things. And in the context of the holy word, the Isla word, it is evil. You know, we can't excuse it. We can't explain it. There's no if and. No, it's like the Christmas tree in that sense. Not saying that the tree is bad, but in following that tradition and saying that it's this, it's 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 dishonest. You know what I mean? It's a lie. It's a bold-faced lie. So, yes, the Good Friday um, is a deception, and the main reason is because it's not biblical. It's not biblical, it's not scriptural. You see, the church went in two different directions, in a sense. After the, when I say the church, I think people are going to think about what Brothers of Majesty says. The church is, is the, the house, right? It's, 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 it's the house of God, it's our hearts, right? The church is not the building, right? But it's the faithful fulfillment of the Christ man, the Christian requirements, according to the teaching of his majesty and his majesty's faith. So the church, the original church, the word for church is the called out ones. So there was first the Jewish or Judaic, right, the Judaic Christianity or the Judaic Christ followers, Nazarenes. That was the original church. So you had a consistency of um, of, of time and of orientation because Yeshua says himself that to the Samaritan woman, you worship that which you know not. We know what we worship for salvation is of Jews or of Yehuda. So right there kind of shows you even in today's terminology a very key um, qualifier because most of our so-called Christian tradition that we have in the West comes through the Gentile branch of the church which, remember what Paul said about we being the natural olive branches because of disobedience, Israel was broken off, and then he grafts in wild olives. Now, the wild olive should not boast itself against the root because the wild olives, speaking of the Gentile church, which was grafted in after the natural branches were broken off, if they boast against the root, remember the root upholds them as grafted in branches, they don't uphold the roots. And if the natural branches can be broken off, so can they be broken off. Now think about that. What were the roots of the wild olives? Paul tells you. Paul was a was, was the apostle to the Gentiles. He wasn't trying to make them Jewish in that sense or Hebrew because they really, you know, in that sense, maybe in spirit on some level, but they couldn't be Hebrew, but they needed to have the right context. When Paul talked about the mystery of iniquity, you understand, he could clearly see within other religious forms how if ones were not in a, a, a groundation, they will kind of get in a kumbaya with a lot of the counterfeit religions that were going on. So he already saw that this antichrist apostasy was already there. You understand, it just would take time to come together. And when I talk about the Sabbath, um, the Sabbath is honored both by the um, by the holy and the unholy. Think about it. When people go out to party Friday, when they go Friday night, that's the Sabbath right there. That's why statistics say, and I think government and FBI, whatever like that, you know, or people maybe from their own recollection know that more crime, violence, murder, and even death happens on the so-called, what they call it, what they call it, brothers and sisters, the week, right? <laughs> you know, on the so-called week end, you know, that begins when? Friday, you know, Friday evening. And even so-called witchcraft, cultic, whatever they want to call it, you know, Wicca, whatever the different names they want to use, they also observe the Sabbath, but they fit in Yah's way but they observe it in their own way. They do what they will. They do not do his will, right? But in his will, we know that the evening begins, you know, a sunset begins the new day. And this is an important understanding to really get the right timing of it. I'm going to be briefer than I was before. I'm going to seek to be briefer than I was before. First thing, 
Michael Root, a Messianic Jew, he does a very good, um, you know, on the on the intellectual, factual, some documents. He has his own, you know, his own coloring, you can say, to it. But the evidence, the, the facts, are worthy of of anyone who's interested in what was the timing and 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 and, and the three days and three nights, because it's so clear and obvious that from Friday to Sunday. You don't have three days and three nights. You know, if people can swallow a lie like that, you see what I'm saying? It could be possessed by only John Noble and the, you know what I mean? Because it doesn't make any so-called, it's not even a matter of faith. It, this is a matter of, 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 of just counting. You know what I mean? It's a matter of either one plus one equals two, and 2 plus 2 equals 4, but they want to tell us that 2 plus 2 equals 5. You see what I'm saying? So just throw away that Good Friday thing. It's a deception. It's a lie. It's to fulfill a, a counterfeit spirituality that has engrafted itself like a virus in Christian garment. You know, we could talk about Mystery Rome, Babylon, Mother of Harlots, you know, and that harlot is like fornicating, you know, fornicating with other gods, and having these bastard children, these all these different sects and denominations that all say they read the Bible but can't even agree that from Friday to Sunday is not three days and three nights. Now, if we look at the Last Supper, let's look at the Last Supper. The last, oh, before I go into that, Michael Rood, Mike Rood, he does um, the, there's a, there's a, I think it's something, yeah, it's something on the YouTube, the Jonah Code. It's like a three-part series, uh, and it's somewhat, it's somewhat in depth. But anyone who's really interested to get some of the more accurate facts, you know, one thing I thought they pointed out that based on when the heavens were aligned with certain signs, because see, with all the information they have from Dendera like ancient Egypt, for all the information they have from even Babylonia, all the information they have from the Mayans and the Aztecs and some of their observations and the new satellites and everything else like that. They fed all this information in the computer, and they are able to basically prove that the Bible and, and the signs that were witnessed and recorded in the Scripture, you know, actually happened, you know, according to the heavenly celestial um, um, clock. That's what Psalm 19 speaks about, the heavens declaring the glory of Elohim and the firmament showing his handiwork day to day, the speech night to night shows knowledge. So this is not looking at it like astrology, which is superstition, ignorance, not a, not a, a, a perfect understanding, but it's looking at it scientifically. You know what I mean? Looking at this as a clock, like reading what time it is, right? So... They're able to now line, align with the information in the Bible, right, and even go back in time to see certain kind of um, alignments. Even the ancient Egypt had certain recordings of of astrological celestial phenomena that, you know, it boggles the mind a little bit because you have to say that, you know, people even back then understood the importance of their time. And, and and it's all about time. I mean, time, and it's not about time in the sense for the Almighty, but it's about time for us because he he gives these signs. These are signs and seasons and and days and years. So the signs we may see the signs, but if we don't, if we're not able to calculate the right time, like I said before, if I said to a Hebrew brother or a Hebrew minded sister, all right, let's meet up at the beginning of the Shabbat, right, the Sabbath. And if someone who doesn't have a good understanding, they would think, oh, Sabbath, yeah, those people, they don't go to work on Saturdays, and so it's, it's, it's Saturday. So early Saturday, that's when they're going to meet up. But when are we going to meet up? We're going to meet up Friday evening sometime because that is the beginning of the Shabbat. So they heard the sign, the signal and the sign, but they don't have the right time. Right, So we hear of the three days and three nights, but they don't have the right timing. The right timing, according to the, now I'm going to introduce some of the Ethiopian um, 
um, evidence, the old church, when I say the old church, I'm saying Hala Selassie's church and the church that existed for the thousand plus years prior to the revelation of the king of kings upon the throne of David. Um, holy, what they call it, holy, um, holy Thursday. I always wondered about this holy Thursday. And Wednesday was seen as being a significant time because you remember in Daniel's prophecy when it says that the Messiah would come and and about the sacrifices and the cutting off and how he would be cut off in the middle of the week. When it says the Messiah will be cut off in the middle of the week, what day is the middle of the week, first of all? To show that Yeshua fulfilled that prophecy in, in the book of Daniel where it says the Messiah shall be cut off in the midst of the week. Now, this is another key thing, and we can't get into too much detail here, but the word week, right, or subai, you know, we call week seven days, is used in, there's, there, there's the, there is the, 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 the weeks of days, but there's also weeks of years too, right, and weeks of prophetic time periods. So you might have a word like day, for example, day. Christ says, don't you know there's 12 hours in a day? He's speaking of the earthly, the terrestrial day. But we know in Scripture there's a day of the Lord, that the day of the Lord may not be limited to 12 hours, but a time period, a certain, like we say, we're in a new day. Does that mean we're in a new day if we're speaking prophetically? You know what I mean? Are we just speaking of the new day today and then tomorrow is not, you know, because the new day will be yesterday, or we're speaking about a certain time. So it's, it's important to get the context of what the word word is. It's, so it's clear in Daniel's prophecy where it says that the Messiah shall be cut off in the midst of the week, that the middle of the week is Wednesday. Right now, what's interesting is that the Last Supper, what we call the Last Supper or the Last Passover, was occurring um, about a day or so before the beginning of 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 the we could say official Passover time. Remember when Christ um, said to them that about he desired to eat this Passover with them and it was like where do you want us to prepare it and he gave them instruction and he went about to prepare it. A key indication that this Passover was not the Passover um that the Jews kept. That would be the next Eve. In other words when the when the Jews or the Hebrews of that time, New Testament time, was about to observe the Passover after they killed the lambs Yeshua already, right, had, as they say, given up the ghost or had said, into your hands I commend my spirit, which is actually Psalm um, 25, verse 1. Yeshua began on the cross with Psalm 22, verse 1, and fulfilled on the cross with Psalm 25, verse 1. So that makes, I and I think, was this a meditation? You know, the, the, you know, like really a deep meditation on the cross. When they thought Christ said Elohe, Elohe, Lama Sabachthani, those so-called Jews or whoever they were, converts or not, they obviously didn't know what they were talking about. They said, "Oh, he's calling on Elijah." But notice at Passover, there's a seat that's left for Elijah. Right? There's a seat that's left in traditional, and this is something that. Is fairly old, I think even older than they, that the seat was left for Elijah. But he wasn't saying Elijah. He was saying Elohai. Elohai was actually Psalm 22. Right, but let me just touch on this right here. The timing of, 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 um, of uh, the, the Last Supper, I thought, was actually when the traditional Passover would happen, which would be the next eve. It was actually um, the evening, the day and evening before, because when Judas Iscariot dipped his sup in the master's dish when he gave a signal that the one who who was going to betray me, he's going to dip his in mine, you know what I mean? Um, and that's how you would know, right? And then 
he told when the devil entered into Iscariot, he said, do what you got to do and do it quickly. And the Bible states, the New Testament, the gospel states that the disciples thought that he was telling Judas to get more things like in preparation for the Passover. So this shows you that they couldn't have been having Passover then. It was a memorial supper, a communion, a Eucharist, the bread and the wine, the Melchizedek order. And we find the bread and the wine is like when I and I, as Rastafari, would come together and we would have an Ito sup, you know, and also, you know, um, the chalice. So we'll have the cup and have some food, breaking of bread. Right, so he was breaking bread with them because you notice there was no lamb there. You know what I mean? There was no lamb there. There was bread there. There was wine there, but there was no lamb in the sense of the traditional lamb. He was the lamb that was there. Right. So when he told Judas, "Do what you got to do," and do, people thought that he was saying to Judas, "You know, get more things." For um, pass like in preparation for Passover, the next indication of when the traditional Passover was, the next eve coming forward, is when the uh, Pharisees, the betrayers, the religious authority, churchical, you know, like orthodox betrayers, were going to betray him, or, or, or rather crucifiers, conspirators, right, when they went to Pontius Pilate. The Bible says in one gospel that he didn't want to, or he didn't want to enter in to where Pilate was, Pontius Pilate or Pontius Pilatos, and Pontius Pilatos had to come out to him, I mean, to them, you know, to the, because the Bible says that they did not, they wanted to, they didn't want to defile themselves by going into the Roman, you know, the Roman tetrarchs gates and the governors, what you call them, because, you know, when in Rome, do what the Romans do, and they regarded that to be unclean to their, you know, religious Jewish standards. So it said that they didn't want to go in and be that evening. Now, here's a key thing in when it says when the past there in the mark and it's also there especially in the Hebrew it says the Passover shall be killed between right the evenings. Which evening? Between the first evening, right? So Yeshua, the supper Right with with the disciples, the breaking of bread, the instituting of the new Eucharist of the memorial. Do this in memory, meditate, meditate. So when you take of this bread and you take of this wine, think of I. You know, do this in memory of I. Um, it took place between then because afterward Christ went to the garden to pray. Judas had already went out and made his deal. Iscariot had went out and made his deal and everything, and then later on in the evening, right, um, came, gave him the kiss, everything. Then they led him where? They led him to, I think, Caiaphas or whatever house. So, so there's a chart. There's a couple of charts I want to share with the eye. One is the crucifixion table, something of that effect, but it's by the Israelite. Dot net, the Israelite.net, the site that I think I pointed out before. The next one I think comes from Hebrew for Christians. It's like kind of a circular, uh, it's, a, it's like a, a JPEG or a PNG, or it's like a pic. And it gives you like a circle and gives you the, the two sides of the day and the hours and a lot of the information and quotes so you can see what in the Bible fits in that time range. Because to see what happened between roughly Tuesday, like right now it's Tuesday evening, the approximate time Yeshua would have had during that particular week, um, would have had the Passover or would have had what was what would be his last supper and institute that memorial bread and wine, that Eucharist would have been sometime in the afternoon going into the evening. When the evening came full, they went out into Gethsemane, the garden. He went out to pray, 
right? Judas already went, or Iscariot already went and did his thing and brought back the the guards of the Sanhedrin, the Jewish establishment. They took him out there, beat him up, slapped him around, you know, spit on him, and then the, the high priest ripped his garment, sent him then to Pontius Pilate. Pontius Pilate, and this is all like happening like overnight going into the morning hours, sent him then to um, sent him then to um, Herod. Herod really liked, strangely, the Bible says like Herod really, you know, he admired Yeshua. He, he wanted to speak to him probably intellectually, you know, wanted to pick his brain or something like that. But Yeshua said nothing to him. That upset Herod. You understand? So then Herod and and Pilate, who were enemies, they got along together and, you know, they would beat him up, so forth and so on. And then Pilate wanted to let him go. Now, this is coming now to, into the day. We're coming now into, like, into what we will call Wednesday, like, the you know, the, 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 the early hours of Wednesday and everything. And so we have the crucifixion. Right, taking place when Yeshua was killed is at the very same time when the lambs had to be killed between the evenings. So if we look at a a a, a symbolic week, right? Sunday is the first day of the week. Wednesday is the middle of the week. Daniel said the Messiah shall be cut off in the middle of the week and, and the everlasting, like atonement and the covenant, and all this fulfilled in Yeshua. This is very interesting. And later on, latter-day Jews, after the real Hebrews were scattered, would say whoever calculates Daniel's prophecy, let him be cursed. Because the Jew, and, and you can find this in, 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 in Jewish encyclopedia, that they didn't want anybody to calculate that because they even recognized that Yeshua, Jesus, did fulfill that. But, they, you know, synagogues are saving down their own kind of a thing, you know, uh, at the same time and everything. So when you calculate from that, that when we have uh, Wednesday, the crucifixion would have taken place Wednesday. Now, remember the time, 3 o'clock, the third hour. It is what hour? It's nine. The six o'clock hour is what hour? It's noon. The nine o'clock hour is what hour? It's um it's three in the afternoon. This is very interesting because otherwise if you're looking at that and you're looking at it through the wrong time, then you're gonna see wrong signs too, or you'll miss the sign, you know, in other words, completely. Right? So on the Wednesday, they they took him down off the cross because, you know, the Jews, they had this thing about their, their kind of the orthodoxy. It's like the orthodoxy, you know, their, their, their rites and rituals. So they said, you know, so they, they, they buried him, but they... They didn't um, embalm, not embalm him, what they call it, um, wrapped him, um, uh, they, they didn't um, wrap him up, spice his body or whatnot like that because it was the beginning, what does the Bible say? It was the of the Shabbat. The, this is where they mistake it. They think that, well, since the Sabbath is, is – um, Friday evening to Saturday evening for the Jews, the Gentile church, right, the Latter-day Gentile church, especially when the papacy came about, they believe that this must have been um, the, the Sabbath, the weekly Sabbath. And this is probably most likely one of the main overt ways that they justify um, Good Friday because it was leading into the Sabbath and 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 the Sabbath day of rest, and he's in the tomb, so he's resting. But what they forget is that before any or the beginning, the first day is a. You know what I mean? The first and even the last days are holy days. So we have this in the Torah and Leviticus shows that so because the Passover Seder was beginning. They had to first slay the lamb, lambs, you know, before they had to silence the lambs, right, before they sat down to have their Passover supper, 
Now, remember, when Yeshua met with his disciples, they were preparing the place because you had to clear out all of uh, um, the hamats, the hamats in the Hebrew. You had to clear out all of the yeast and the leaven out of the house. And there's all the kashrut, you know, kosher preparation, we would call aital. There were certain things they had to do for this Hebrew aital sup to repair the house and everything. That's why when Judas ran out of there, you know, he said, do what you got to do and do it quickly. The disciples, many of the disciples thought, oh, he told him to go get some things for the feast, the feast that would be coming up the next eve. But between that, that sup and the next evening, you know, the Daniel prophecy, concerning the Messiah being cut off, not for his own sins, but for the people in the midst of, in the middle of the week, right? And the middle of the week, even then, was the day that we would call Wednesday. So by the time Wednesday, what we call today Wednesday evening, which is actually Thursday evening, thinking about it hebraically. So that's why I go slow and we go over this a little bit and maybe take down a couple of these points. The main point is that the new day begins at sunset. And that, that's, that's the, you know, be like an amphibian. You have to be like an amphibian, in the water, out the water. You have to see it the way it is now. How can you help not seeing it? But then also, you know, see it in the, in the righteous mind. When you see it in the righteous mind, it fits perfectly, right? Because the Ethiopians even call Thursday Holy Thursday. I think Kedus Hamus, yeah, Kedus Hamus. One of I and I, um, Ethiopian sisters, um, she held me up one one uh, Easter Passover Fasika time. And she said, this is a very holy greeting. I remember reading about it, but I didn't make the connection until she held me up with Kedus Hamus. I, I'm like, uh, Kedus Hamus? I was like, isn't that like the fifth day? And isn't the fifth day like Thursday? I'm like, why? I was, I was, I was wondering, like, why is this holy? And, and then as I started to do a little bit of study on getting the days, I was really intrigued to find out, okay, since there's no Good Friday in that sense, you know what I mean? That's not what happened. The the Sabbath that the Bible talks about was the beginning of the past at evening when they took Yeshua down off the cross and they put him in Joseph or Arimathea's tomb and they and and even when the Sabbath come in, you can't do no work. They couldn't spice up the body or whatnot like that. They had to put him in the tomb. And that's why Mary, right, would be out there early, right? Not Friday. She couldn't do it Friday because Friday is the beginning of the weekly Shabbat, right? So Friday into Saturday. So that's what the Bible says early when? Early the first day of the week. The first day of the week is Ehud. In the Ethiopic, we say Sunday today. The first day of the week is Sunday. And you notice that Yeshua was already risen then. So if we count the time, dying or, or, or letting, you know, letting his soul go into the into Abba's hands, right, um, and to the world, dying on the Wednesday. Right, being buried by the time the evening come in, we have Thursday, Friday, Saturday, right, three days, right, early Sunday morning there in the garden. That is what the ancient Ethiopian um, um, documents and observances, like even now when they say Kedus Hamus, some don't even know why it's Kedus Hamus. You know, like, well, I mean, I think some do, but some might not. These things are not taught because in this latter-day Laodicean, lukewarm church age, which is the last church age, you know, there's a lot of lukewarmism. People know that there's no Santa Claus and it has nothing to do with Yeshua. They know that the Easter bunny and eggs and all this other, in that context, have nothing to do with it, but they go along with it. You know what I mean? So forth and so on. So. That is a, a kind of just a basic 
kind of an overs, but I really, once again, recommend um, the Jonah Code, right? Because he says in the Jonah Code that when the heavens really match the day and, and the week and, and the other the other scriptural biblical indications, it would have been 27 A.D. Most of us are taught that Yeshua was crucified 34 A.D. I noticed something between 24, 27 and, and 34. Remember, the Ethiopian calendar is according to the ancient, you know, pre-AD calendar. So it's still in keeping with the ancient calendars. And they say it's seven years so-called behind. Really, the Western calendar is seven, eight years ahead. So if you put that seven right in the, between 27 and 34, you'll see how the Ethiopian calculation also bears witness to the truth. So Yeshua was crucified on the Wednesday in the week, the last supper or that, that, that Eucharist, that feast, that meal, and that institution of that memorial remembrance took place, that Melchizedek breaking of bread, that took place on the Tuesday, right? took place on the Tuesday, the betrayal between the Tuesday evening, which is actually Wednesday evening, coming into Wednesday, right? Um, the beating also and forth from the Pharisees to Pilate to, the, to, to Herod, and then like back around again, and then finally outside, outside of Jerusalem to Golgotha, right? And at the very time that Yeshua gave up the spirit as Psalm 25 and 1 said, Father, into your hands, you know, I give my, I give my spirit, I give my soul, right, um, you find that that is the very time that in the temple they would, a kosher, according to Torah, the observance of Torah, would, set, would, would kill the lambs, according to what uh, Exodus chapter 12 says, that the lamb would be killed between the evenings. So we have a perfect, you know, match, and this is what we knew in the first century time. This is what many of the Jews or Judeans who had faith in Yeshua knew. When they started to look at it like this is Daniel's prophecy in the middle of the week, you know, they saw different signs that even now by properly studying, we can also see, right? Um, and you have to remember that the Jews and the Hebrews are a tough crowd <laughs> in that sense. You know, and as Paul said, the Jews look for a sign while the Greeks and the Gentiles, they look for, like, intellect and wisdom. You know what I mean? When the Hebrews and the Jews who had faith in the Messiah saw, you understand, through their study and knowledge of the Scripture, what he had fulfilled, this is what persuaded them, and that was the first church, which was the so-called Jewish or Judaic Christianity, of which Ethiopia and the Eastern churches share in that. That's why you will find more traces of of biblical and Hebrew connection than you would find when the churches went to to Europe, although they degenerated much later. In other words, even the European churches at one point also had had um, true, I'll say, um, true teachings. But once the papacy rose up, you know, because the papacy was bringing in the ancient Babylonian worship. You understand? Um, remember, Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, talks about two births, two mothers. It talks about the serpent, right? The serpent seed and the woman seed. So what the serpent seed basically did, especially in the Babylonian church, was clone itself as the woman, but, but bring in their own kind of rituals and tell people to read the Bible and do what they did, you know, so that all makes sense because they said the cover-up is worse than the crime, you know? So I hope that's helpful. Are we still on? Are we still on? <laughs> I hope some of this gets through. Brothers, sisters. Oh, well, give thanks. Uh, give thanks for for, for making for that's a blessed elaboration on the uh, on the uh, on the original question, and give thanks. And for just just to uh, just uh, as the I pointed out, just the significance of the time. If you think about it, as the I pointed out, 
uh, this being a time when uh, the sacrifice, because, you know, we're into, this is the time now with Testify Tuesdays, which is really Wednesday in that sense. So uh, the gathering, you know, happened <laughs> at a blessed time. But just to uh, bring forth, as the I was bringing forth with, uh, as a reasoning, from the yeah. uh, from Daniel's prophecy, Daniel 9, chapter 27 is what's, uh, is, is, uh, as the I was uh, bringing out to just uh, quote, uh, quote the original um, uh, from again uh, Daniel nine chapter twenty seven and he can, and he shall and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation oblation here meaning offering or um, the oblation to ce- to cease and for the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate even till the consummation and that and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. So, again, just to make the reference, uh, uh, Daniel chapter 9, uh, verse 27, for ones the ones um, who are, you know, want to go forth and check check the uh, the reference. So, um, yes, I give thanks uh, for for that because I, I know that's, uh, you know, and especially now, and, and uh, I guess the, as a part B, a subpart to the question, I guess, you know, it's, uh, now that we know, as you know not, not that as, as we know, but now that we um, now that we have a full, ex, uh, you know, extrapolation of of the question, um, then what would be the, you know, as the adverse of that? What would be what would be the, the you know the the cause to really have, uh, you know, the Good Friday, and then the, you know what, what you know what's the other part of it? Because you know, is it just so so that it neatly falls into a Friday and then goes into a Sunday, or is it? I mean, I know we know what Good Friday is, my brother. 